Hello and welcome to another episode on Maritime Radar. Climate change is happening and will continue to grow, with impact felt throughout the marine environment. Carbon emissions continue to increase in spite of intergovernmental action to tackle the issue. Global temperatures are forecast to rise, leading to an increasing frequency and intensity of climate-related hazards such as tropical storms, rising sea levels, inland flooding, drought, and extreme heat events. The effects of climate change are being felt across the world. This is creating challenges for ports, the maritime industry, and disrupting trade operations. This provides a threat to the future sustainability of seaports and their related infrastructure. The need to adapt and mitigate the impacts created by climate change are some of the issues that will be on the front burner on today's show. I'm Norma Yaswali. The world needs a sustainable and efficient shipping industry to keep the wheels of global trade in constant motion, ensuring a safe, secure, and sustainable manner. It is against this background that shipping is undergoing substantial change, taking on board new technologies and digitization, tackling climate change, and working to improve its diversity, confronting the economic impact of climate change on ports and the marine sector is critical for global trade employment and to maintain the supply of food and other essential goods. There can be no doubt that decarbonization is one of the greatest challenges of our time. Before we get further into today's lineup on the program, let's find out the latest in maritime news. At least 30 commercial ships dropped anchor around Gabon's waters after military officers said they had seized power in the Central African country. Military officers in the oil-producing country added they had put President Ali Bongo under house arrest after the country's election body announced that he had won a third term. But as we were closed and state institutions were dissolved as there is already a build-up of vessels. The vessels included commercial cargo ships as well as tankers that are stopped near to the country's major ports, including a window near to the capital, Libreville, and Port Gentil for the south, according to ship tracking data. Local media reported that port operations in Libreville had stopped and no vessels had entered or departed the port since the announcement of the coup. The Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA, has ordered the immediate suspension of truck processing through virtual parks on its ETO platform. Head of Operations of the Truck Transit Park Limited, Irabo Akonoman, said the suspension was part of the ongoing efforts to streamline and optimize the operational processes of the platform. All trucks arriving at the port shall have emanated from an NPA-approved physical truck park, pre-gate or export processing terminal without exception. In the directive, the NPA added that it hoped to receive the cooperation and understanding of all stakeholders during this period of evaluation and adjustment. Ghanaian President Nana Addo Dankwa Akufo Addo has launched the National Integrated Maritime Strategy NIMS to boost the protection of the country's territorial waters. Akufo Addo launched his strategy while opening the two-day International Maritime Defense Exhibition and Conference in Accra, the Ghanaian capital, where he said protecting the territorial waters of Ghana was critical to its economic, environmental and security importance. He reiterated that government has recognized the need for a well-resourced and technically advanced navy in the face of maritime threats in the Gulf of Guinea as Ghana's territorial waters and business must be protected. He also noted that the country has started equipping the Navy with drones, coastal radars, real-time surveillance and tracking protocols to improve its physical presence at sea, while pledging that the government would increase the fleet of patrol boats of the country's Navy to improve operational efficiency. The high renewable energy potential of Latin American countries, the importance of bringing the maritime and energy sector together, and investment opportunities on the production 
upscaling and eventual bunkering of green shipping fuels and port infrastructure were at the core of the debate during the International Maritime Organization's Green Shipping Conference in Latin America this week. Speaking at the conference, Asenio Dominguez, Marine Environment Division IMO, highlighted the significant contribution of Latin American countries during the negotiations on the adoption of the revised IMO strategy on reduction of GHG emissions from ships in July 2023. The IMO Green Shipping Conference focused on implementing the 2023 IMO GHG strategy by unlocking opportunities and investments. Common themes throughout the panel sessions were the opportunities for Latin America as a continent in terms of producing and trading zero and near carbon bunker fuels, the national challenges and the technology solutions to achieve an equal and inclusive decarbonization. wake up to a lot of stories about Africa. But this is where you get the story straight. Where we explore different angles because we understand our stories. There's that passion when it's your perspective and not a distant perception. I know you hear it a lot, but it's true. Nobody can tell your story better than you. That's what we do. All day, every day, on New Central TV. Our African stories by Africans for Africans. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Radar. A key driver of climate change is the greenhouse effect due to the rising emissions from human activities such as the burning of coal, deforestation, oil and gas. Our guest, Dr. Eugene Itwa, an environmental sustainability expert, CEO, Natural Eco Capital and coordinator, Nigeria Long-Term Low Emissions Development Strategy. Development shares Nigeria's preparedness towards decarbonizing its maritime industry in line with IMO's move to address challenges posed by climate change. Stay with us. Dr. Yutwa, it's good to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. The fact that the warming planet threatens stability around the globe is not new. Talk us through um, the threats that climate change poses to peace, uh, to stability, and to the maritime industry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it, it appears uh, for every leap today, climate change is an issue. I'm not too sure uh, yesterday, if I asked yesterday, before now, you were talking about climate change, even as a journalist, but today you are talking about it. Climate change is causing some serious changes everywhere. You can see the movements. You recall not too long ago the kind of uh, migration we had and we're still having. For instance, from the northern part of the country to the southern part. Some aspects of that is traced to climate change issues. For the maritime sector that uh, you are actually focusing on, climate change is a serious challenge to that sector. The oceans are increasing their temperature, sea level rise, due to melting glaciers and acidification. Oceans, like we have said, are becoming more and more acidic. When this happens, they absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And concurrently, oxygen level is depleted. And the impact is severe on all of us. Directly, the marine species are dealt with. Aquatic species, like you want to call them, of course, we know 
they are facing their own challenges. We have biodiversity loss as this alters their borders, the diversity, the distribution of the species, whether in the terrestrial environment or even right there in the sea. In addition, when we have sea level rise, what happens? There's this overall impact of productivity within the shipping industry uh, 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 sector worldwide. So generally, extreme weather can cause significant disruption at seaports, which are vulnerable to flooding, waves, and winds due to their geographical positions. We have also seen storm surges and flood tides, of course, can impact the loading and discharging of cargo due to flooding and higher water levels. So this, the impacts are severe for the, the sector you are covering, just as it is severe on other sectors. No wonder every leap like I said earlier, is talking about it. Do you want to talk about the erosion and accretion caused by sea level rise? Or ice melting in the polar regions? Which, of course, could even impact on shipping routes. Changes in shipping routes would, of course, impact exports and import patterns. Okay, looking at these uh, severe challenges um, this has pushed on us, do you think, are you, um, do you think um, um, or do you share this school of thought that says that investing in technology or and uh, modern ships um, is apt to curb the impact of this shipping and maritime related activities uh, of climate change that you mentioned? Certainly, certainly. Because before, over the years, what have we had? shipping or ship that can pollute and indeed have been polluting and releasing these emissions with the greenhouse gas emissions that we're talking about no wonder I, uh, the international maritime organization has on its own been working to see that all of these are reduced so investing in technology to reducing all the impacts is quite good and healthy but do, you think, but do you think Africa has the resources to do this? As a group of nations, let me put it that way, no. Africa does not have that resource. Countries in Africa do not have that resources. It is generally accepted that on its own, let me put it that way, governments cannot, do not have enough money to deal with the issues. Private sector needs to come into the space, first and foremost. Why the government within the continent is doing it their own place? The private sector can also do its own. But would that be sufficient? Certainly no. The international partners are needed. International corporations are needed for us to be able to handle this challenge that we are facing as a continent. And indeed, for the different nations, they need that as well. Okay, so uh, the acquisition of these newer ship, uh, ships um, you are posing to government, but uh, we don't see um, enough investment in the maritime sector. So what um, will you think is the focus of this new Ministry of Marine and, um, and Blue Economy? What do you think? Uh, or what advice do you have for them? What should be the focus looking at the severe consequences of this climate change? The ministry indeed needs first and foremost to develop a national plan to understand what are the needs. What do we really need to do? What are the resources needed? As far as I know, it is a new ministry. Perhaps they already have their mandate, but in understanding that mandate as it relates to virtually every stakeholder within the sector, they need to do a mapping. 
we need to assess what we have, the capacity, the technology, the equipment. Once they do all of this, of course, you know where the needs are and where resources are needed and where they could be deployed. So you are saying that Nigeria is not prepared um, towards decarbonizing uh, the maritime sector? You can't say so, because Nigeria has been part of uh, the IMO. The strategies that have been developed by IMO, Nigeria has always been part of it. And so it's been going through that uh, process and understand what, uh, what to do. So the question now is how that, that we know what, uh, what is to be done, how do we get it done? Do we have the resources? It is actually to now map and under, uh, to map what we know, the resources we need, and how to deploy it. I think that is what uh, uh, I will say. For instance, you 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 know that the IMO uh, adopted the 2023 uh, strategy, the reverse GAG reduction strategy for global shipping. Uh, shipping. Uh, Nigeria is part of it. As so if it's part of it, it, in other words, they understood what they were part of. But to what extent can we actually deploy the knowledge? See, that is where the challenge is. Now that we have a ministry that can bring all of that to be all to bear, I think I will say that we're ready now. Let but in getting uh, in taking the necessary action, we need to know what action to take. And how to go about it. Okay, we'll I think be, those we'll, are just the few things. We'll be taking you your thoughts. We'll be taking your thoughts as an expert on um, what the new ministry should be doing. But that will be after this short break. Please stay with us. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. If you are just joining us, this is my time reader and I still have with me Dr. Eugene Itwa. Before we went on that break, I said um, as an expert, what um, are you go objectives are you going to set for this new ministry, the Marine and Blue Economy Ministry? Well, the, the ministry needs to, first and foremost, need to understand what they are, if they have been given a blueprint to run with. They want to bring it out, let the stakeholder know what their mandate is all about, okay. where there are gaps, experts, the stakeholders need to support in uh, plugging the gap in terms of what they need to do. Based on, the, on that, in enriching their mandate as to what to do, of course, the uh, level of actions, the relevant stakeholders that need to be part of those actions that they need to take, and then, of course, uh, the resources that they need. They need to map all of that, like I said earlier. But take notes. Some of these activities that they want to go into, there are other ministries they have such mandates or related mandates. They should be in position to also understand that, try to uh, see where one mandate stops and another uh, starts. Of course, we don't have a vacuum. That transition, how they need to look at it and work, uh, work at uh, uh, that pathway. And again, for the sector, specifically for the maritime sector, they want to understand or identify environmentally friendly technologies such as digital platforms, data analysis, Internet of Things sensors that will enable the shipping industry to lower its own carbon footprint or even reduce fuel consumption as well as mitigate uh, uh, pollution. For instance, 
We talk about plastic, there will be a time when the number of plastics we have in the sea will be more than the fishes we have. How can this ministry work with those that take charge of the land, the terrestrial, so that that synergy is there, we no longer have plastic going to the sea. Because you have plastic coming from the land and going to the sea. The sheep on their own, I do not think they just go to the sea and dump this plastic snow. So there is that synergy, that synergy needs to be built. They need to understand all of that and indeed see how they can facilitate and optim. Why is tackling uh, climate change, why do you think is crucial for the future of our ports in Nigeria? Well, if uh, the, based on the what science has said, that if things remain the way they are, business as usual, we will blow ourselves out of existence. And you can see the uh, the flood we see everywhere when it rains. Aspect of that is stressed. Let's leave that the drainages are green. Because elsewhere that you have this flooding, uh, those uh, drainages are not blocked. In Nigeria, yes, we have such. The IPCC report shows that the intensity of extreme events will be higher than as it has always been. Now, where there is drought, it's going to worsen. So if we have all of that, all those... Uh, uh, projections. What it implies is that it's going to impact on all of us, as we already seen. Climate change has led to more frequent extreme weather events, threatening livelihood. We know that, particularly the vulnerable communities, especially those communities that are not well planned. Even those that are planned now, they are suffering as well. So. The, the, the is going to be a major thing. I'll give you another example. The small island developing states or nations have long been recognized as being particularly at risk to the challenges of climate change. By nature, they face multiple challenges due to their remote locations, their size, their fragile ecosystem, their small population, and then limited the resources and capabilities. So if we look at all of that, and nothing is done, the situation, it is fear the situation will worsen. So for that not to happen, we need to take action. What so, action do you think we should be taking now? Well, already you recall that uh, the Paris Agreement uh, by the nations signed in 2015, that set the tool like a plan of action for everyone. I talked about the national det determined contribution earlier. For instance, Nigeria has one which was updated in 2021. That set the action for each nation, for those nations that signed and ratified the, the, that agreement. But in addition to that, the, within the, for the maritime sector, you know, they are, I mentioned one of the ones that uh, the IMO has been leading on in getting every other stakeholders in the sector to see that emissions within that sector is reduced. So there are actions here and there. For the uh, directly as part of the SDGs, you know, for instance, we have uh, the Climate Action Goal uh, 13. That focuses on what we must do regarding uh, climate. So in other words, there are activities. And I do know not too long ago, uh, I've had opportunity to even uh, speak uh, with a uh, speak or trade journalist on this area of climate change and uh, what journalists themselves can do. And perhaps you are doing one now, for instance, uh, through this uh, medium, you further help on uh, what we all need to do, awareness group, so all of us need to take one form of action or the other. The situation will worsen if nothing is done. The situation will worsen 
if nothing is done now, those are the words of Dr. Eugene Itwa. He is an environmental sustainability expert. We must thank you for your time and thoughts on the program. Thank you very much. And bye for now. wake up to a lot of stories about Africa. But this is where you get the story straight. Where we explore different angles because we understand our stories. There's that passion when it's your perspective and not a distant perception. I know you hear it a lot, but it's true. Nobody can tell your story better than you. That's what we do. All day, every day, on New Central TV. Our African stories by Africans for Africans. And this is where we draw the curtain on this week's episode. I hope you learned a lot on climate change. Join us every week on Maritime Radar as we explore potentials that will ensure the development of the maritime sector in Africa. You can also expect the latest in global and local maritime news plus industry insight right here. I'm Norma Obiaswala. Many thanks for your time on today's show and see you again next week.